What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. So an avid follower of the channel Adam Hickey sent me this video a few weeks back and it was so ridiculous that I just had to do a video on it. It's basically a news segment on Sky News Australia where they talked a load of nonsense about great white sharks. I'm actually a little bit disappointed with Sky News on this one because they're usually pretty on it with the shark stuff but they've totally missed the mark with this one. Right, I'm not going to waste any more time introing this one, let's get stuck in. Okay, they're the menacing creatures lurking beneath our shores, up and down our coastlines. Sharks. Right, straight off the bat here, you can see how the tone of this news segment is going to go as they've described sharks as the menacing creatures lurking beneath our shores. After decades of being under threat, the tides have turned and an explosion in the number of sharks in Australian waters has led to an increased risk of attack and exposure, of course, especially as we head into the swimming seasons. Now, sadly, political will, technocrats and bureaucratic green tape are putting Australian lives at risk as we sit back and watch shark numbers explode. Now, only this week, there was another shark attack off the coast of Coffs Harbour on the New South Wales mid-north coast. A canoe was bitten in half. The paddler was rescued by a passing boat, which ironically was on the water installing a smart drum line for sharks, the local yacht Commodore in Coffs said afterwards that sharks are out there in plague proportions. OK, so initially here, the news anchor is saying that an increased shark population is going to lead to an increase of attacks and exposure to sharks. So, yeah, if shark populations increase, as well as a human population that's increasing, alongside more and more people using the water, you are going to get an increased number of incidents. That's pretty obvious. According to ISAF, which is the International Shark Attack Files, there's been 20 shark-related fatalities in Australia in around the last 10 years, which works out to about two per year-ish. So admittedly, this hasn't included 2022 yet because the official data hasn't been released. But if you average it out, it's going to be probably around two per year. It's about the same number of people that die each year in Australia from snakes or crocodiles. But you don't tend to read about them in the news, do you? He then goes on to cite an incident in Coffs Harbour where a canoe was bitten by what's thought to be a great white and the shark basically had a good old chump on the side of his canoe and then swam off and the man was completely unharmed. He also keeps mentioning the word plague and it's in nice big text on the screen for everyone to read, but it's not really a plague to be honest. Their population size hasn't just suddenly boomed. It doesn't work like that. Shark numbers on the east coast of Australia increase and decrease at certain times of the year. During the winter months, i.e. May to September, September, humpback whales migrate northwards along the coasts of Australia and it's been speculated that great white sharks might be following them on this migration. I say speculated because it's not been officially proved yet but a lot of scientists do think this is the case. So what you're seeing here is a completely natural increase based on the time of year. As the whales migrate from south to north, the sharks follow them because it could be a really good chance for a meal. The plague that he's talking about here is a completely natural occurrence that is only going to be happening for a few months before their numbers start to dwindle again. One man who knows Sydney's waterways like the back of his hand is Roman Buchowski, a professional fisherman and fishing commentator. He's in the studio with me right now. The Commodore, Butch, said yes. they are in plague proportions along the mid-north coast. That is not the first time that I've had that said to me. What's your response to that comment? Well, as a fisherman, I've fished all around Australia and lately over the northern part of Australia, every fisherman will tell you that there are more and more sharks that keep taking the fish that have been caught, they're in plague proportions, and the furphy that they're an endangered species, it doesn't hold water. Because around the world sometimes, some places around the world, they are endangered. They've been massacred, they've taken their fins off, but not in Australia. So then they get this fisherman on to talk about the shark numbers and he immediately points out that sharks are taking fish from fishermen in northern Australia. This is the classic go-to pissed off fisherman who's annoyed because he's losing his catch to sharks. And instead of using tactics to try and repel the sharks away from his fishing line, he's gone down the we got too many sharks in our waters and something needs to be done about it route, which is an absolute classic. Also, I'm really sorry for that terrible Australian accent. <laughs> 
He also mentioned there about great whites being endangered around the world, but not in Australia, which is an interesting point. So Australia's population of great white sharks is actually pretty difficult to estimate, but the numbers on the East Coast are thought to be about 750 adults. And then when you include juveniles, it jumps to about 5,000. 750 adults, that's 750 sharks that are capable of reproducing and sustaining that population. It's really not that many on the East Coast, but 5,000 in total on the East Coast, when you include the juveniles, is in my opinion a fairly healthy population of white sharks when you compare that to other white shark hotspots around the world. And with that fairly healthy population, it shows you Australia has a pretty healthy marine ecosystem. If you were to go in and remove a bunch of those white sharks, I don't know, say by culling them, that's going to have a massive detrimental impact on the global population of great white sharks. There's been no commercial fishery for sharks for a long time in Australia, and there's been an outright ban on great whites. Mm. Sit for decades now. So tell me about the numbers of great whites in particular. Well, OK. By their own figures, by the Department of Primary Industries figures, they've ta tagged over 850 sharks. White, great whites, a few few, few tigers and a few uh, makos and a few other fish. And it's not restricted to South Australia, right? Anymore? Oh, no, that, no, no. This, this has been a total ban all around Australia for great whites. So it's no wonder that there's more great whites... And, of course, because it's decades since they've been able to be caught, they're getting bigger, aren't they? The fisherman then mentions here that there's been no commercial fishery for great white sharks for a long time, which is absolutely correct. Great whites have been protected in Australian waters since 1999, and this is when researchers started to notice massive declines in their numbers. That's not to say that great white sharks aren't being killed in Australia, by the way. This still does happen, it's just not legal. But the reason they brought that legislation in back in 1999 is because their population was in real trouble. And that's because these species are known in the science realm as K-selected species. K-selected species are characterized by their slow growth, delayed maturity, and the fact that they only have a few offspring that actually reach adulthood. So it means that when you damage their populations, it can take a really, really long time for that population to recover. And it's exactly what we're seeing here with great whites. It's taken nearly 25 years since that legislation came in in 1999 for that population to show any signs of recovery. 25 years. And the smaller sharks, they mainly feed on fish and squid. When they get bigger... Hello, they start yeah. targeting mammals. Mm. What mammals? Whales, dolphins, seals. What's the last mammal that swims in the water? Us. Exactly. Yeah. So, yep, he's right here. Initially, the younger great white sharks do feed on fish and then the larger individuals turn to marine mammals. But to suggest that great whites are going to actively turn to feeding on humans instead of seals and whales is just pure nonsense. The stats just don't back that up if you look at attacks on humans over the years. And while yes, sharks do occasionally bite humans, and on even rarer occasions they might eat those humans, it's not really that common. It's so, so rare. I know that some of you will cite the fairly recent Simon Nellis incident in Australia, which is totally fair, but again, that is a very, very rare incident. The amount of humans a single great white shark would have to eat to try and sustain itself is astronomical, and we're just not seeing that in the shark attack data. So, yeah, nonsense. Tell me a little bit about this. How did we get to this point? Who pushed the endangered line? And isn't it about time that we had a relook at the numbers and started to adjudicate whether the endangered line applies to sharks around our waters? That's the mystery. I never understood why great whites were put on an endangered list. I don't know who did the research, I don't know where it came from, but there was a ban put on recreational fishermen, in other words, game fishermen. Yeah. In the day, there was a sort of a de facto culling because the game fishermen would go to particularly South Australia, they would try to catch world record fish, which are great big female breeders. They would kill those and weigh them and send them off photos and give world records. Right? So that was a sort of a de facto culling, mm. you see? But once that was stopped, no culling. So what happens? Of course you're going to have more great whites and they're going to get bigger and bigger and they're going to start eating people. OK. OK, so here he says he has no idea where this research came from and I think I can help here. Back in 1999, when the Great White Shark Protection Laws came into place, data on their numbers was collected in Australia from a bunch of different sources. These species are notoriously difficult to monitor. They were back then and they still are now, which makes collecting rigorous data on their numbers pretty hard. But they still managed to gather some data from the shark control program, which is where they have nets on beaches to supposedly protect bathers. And ironically, they even 
even collected data from game fishermen, which is what this very grumpy fisherman is. So he didn't know where that data or research came from. It probably came from himself. <laughs> Anyway, at the time, there was a bit of a panic because they were finding from these data sources massive declines in white shark numbers since the 1950s, some of which were showing 94% declines in their numbers. The trend wasn't specific to just Australia, of course. This trend was spotted across the world. So internationally, they gained protections, as they should have done. Are politicians, and I'm talking about all levels now, uh, are they too scared to make a call on this because of angry greenies? Do you Absolutely. think that's... Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. They're enthralled to them. They're, they're terrified of them. The other day, there was, a, there was a good thing that happened because a green mayor in, in Waverley decided, oh, let's get rid of the shark nets at Bondi. Yeah. But the government overruled it. Yeah. So that's a sign that they're... Th I mean, these people say, well, the nets are catching other, other fish rather than, and, you know, turtles and whatever... But I, I put the life of a human being ahead of a turtle, don't you? We're a supreme species. <laughs> hey? And then we get to the real nitty gritty of the video here where they start bitching about the Greens, which I presume is either a political party or movement in Australia. I'm not massive into politics personally, but it does look like they're coming at this from a pretty right wing perspective. <laughs> give us coal, give us gas, give us a crippled marine ecosystem, but as long as the humans are okay, we're all good. The news anchor even says that we're a supreme species. Come on, man. They do briefly touch on the fact that other marine animals get caught in shark nets, which is a massive problem in Australia, but maybe that's a topic saved for another video. I just wanted to address this for you all today because every now and again, you're going to get some news that is full of absolute rubbish. These animals are so important for the health of our ecosystems, and when you remove them, bad things start to happen. The fact that Australia has a decent-ish population of white sharks at the moment is a really good thing. It shows they've got a healthy marine mammal population, which means they've got nutrient-rich waters full of krill and other small fishes for them to feed on, which means they've probably got a lot of healthy reefs. I could go on and on, but it's all connected. Now, I'm not sat here saying that we should just ignore negative human shark interactions. That would just be stupid. When more people enter the water in areas where white sharks are present, more people are going to get bitten, and sadly, some more people might die. White sharks do occasionally bite humans. Sometimes it's a mistake, and on even rarer occasions, it's not a mistake, but it does happen. Each incident is massively context-dependent, and we have to remember that. It's not just a case of, well, all white shark attacks on humans are mistaken identity, or all white shark attacks on humans are because they're trying to predate humans. Each situation is different. They are opportunistic predators at the end of the day and will eat what they can to survive, but on the vast, vast majority majority of occasions, they will stick to what they normally eat. What I'm saying is that we need to start looking at better ways of reducing negative interactions between humans and sharks that doesn't necessarily involve countrywide culling. Things like being shark smart when you go swimming, or shark drone spotters, or looking at advancements in shark repellent technologies. All of these things are things we should be looking into. Anyway, that's enough ranting from me. <laughs> I do get a little bit worked up about these things every now and again, but what did you think of those two? Do you think they're talking sense or is it a load of rubbish? What do you think Australia should do to try and reduce negative interactions between sharks and humans? Let me know in the comments. Also, have you seen any more stupid news discussions like this one online somewhere? And if you want me to address it, link me to it below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It really, really helps out the channel every time you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Till then, see you next time.